Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Cake Foo Master Series. I'm Amelia Carbine, your host, and I want to welcome you guys all here today. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thanks for coming, and and we have a lot of a lot of people that are here every week, and and we love you. And if you're new, we love you too. <laughs> Keep coming back. <laughs> um, so today we have a really awesome guest. Uh, she is. Uh, many times award-winning and a very, very talented cake decorator and extremely skilled in piping. And we are very, very excited to have Don Parrott with us. So welcome, Don. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Well, we're so glad that you came. We actually have had Don on, um, on a training before, and it's been a, quite a while. <laughs> So yeah, we thought, fun. oh, we need to have you back. <laughs> so thanks <laughs> for coming back. back. <laughs> I think this will be this will be a good one. Um, okay, so let's start off, Don, by talking about you a little bit and explain, you know, where oh, where you came from, how you started, your you know, culinary background, all of all of that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, well, originally from Canada, and I moved to the U.S. in '96 and been here, uh, we've kind of bounced around a lot with my husband, so I was looking for something to do and picked up a wilting kit in the store. Um, my dad and my stepmom made cakes when we were kids, and that kind of was how it started. And I thought, well, if I had kids, it would be fun to know how to do those character cakes, just like every other person. Um, but I found out really quick that I really enjoyed it, and then uh, kind of volunteered at a local bakery up in Dallas area. Met one of my dearest friends who taught me everything about buttercream at that time, and then I kind of grew from there, went into fondant, and eventually found royal icing, which has become kind of like my passion. And then after that, I actually did go to a culinary school and become a certified pastry chef. And I ended up teaching for that culinary school for a year. So as well as cakes, we do sugar and chocolate and pastillage and all that fun stuff as well. But cakes is definitely where my passion is. That's awesome. Okay, and so you have actually, um, you, you have made quite the name for yourself. You have competed uh, several times. You want to talk about your competitions and, and the awards that you've won? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> Toot your own horn. <laughs> I'm a competition junkie. Uh, <laughs> I'll admit it. Uh, I do love to compete, uh, but I, I compete differently than some. I compete because, honestly, I think I am the decorator that I am due to competition work because I've never re-entered a piece twice. I always take the judge's critique and try something new and it pushed me to get better and better. Um, I started off with just some small local competitions and then eventually someone kind of asked me to go to the Oklahoma Sugar Art Show and that was a scary feat. Uh, but it, I, you know, I survived, I did well. Uh, I've been going this year was the eighth year that I've been there. Um, a few years back I got fifth overall and then this past year I got first place which was pretty exciting. I actually made the, the top three which was really exciting. And I do a lot of ACF competition, which is the actual chef federation where you have to use strictly real cake. So I do those and I take a lot of students with me to those as well. Um, yeah, you pretty much if there's a competition, if I can make it, I just love to go. They're fun. I like talking to people, seeing, I love seeing the beginners that are coming up and they get so excited when they see the work. That gets me excited. That is really fun. I, I, there's something about teaching that is just so rewarding and so fun. And it is. And to see people's successes and their excitement and everything, it's really fun. Well, so. Oklahoma was so fun this year. I had, um, oh, I have many. I think I had seven of my students compete in Oklahoma this year. Uh, one of them took best of division for a beginner, and the and two other ones actually took the seconds and the thirds, all the categories right behind them. Actually, all these students took almost the entire beginner division by storm. That was exciting. I think I was more excited for them than to find out how I did. That was amazing. Awesome. That's awesome. All right. Well, um, you actually have some DVDs that you've come out with. Uh, you've, you've had some of them for a while, and you just are you know, continually adding to them. Um, I wanted to show you guys, let's see if we can pull this up here. These are the DVDs that, that you have so far. There are six of them. So yeah. oh, that's that's 
really great. Six DVDs all on string work of some kind. You know, oh, pipe string work. Yeah, yeah. So this is really awesome. So we've got, um, there, there are lots of different types of piping and string work that I'm sure that a lot of people, unless, unless you really study it, you don't know the difference between what everything is. You want to explain the difference between the different types of string work? Sure. Um, that was one of the problems I had. It's one of the reasons I went ahead and did the DVDs. People had asked me for a while, and uh, there's only a few books out there on string work. You know, Eddie Spence, his Art of Royal Icing, he touches on some of the different types. There's another one um, called Extension Work by Christine Flynn. That's kind of what got me started in string work. Um, but there's three main kinds. You've got bridge string work, there's bridgeless, and oriental. Those are the most common. Uh, bridge string work, is you can do it in one of two ways. The actual bridge is piped on the cake, and it's a series of layers. On average, you'll do pipe five layers out from your cake, and then you pipe your string. So it's a solid bridge. But you can also cut a piece of gum paste and attach that. And then that way you could shape it into a curved shape or whatever you prefer. Um, and in the bridge string work, we go over both of those. And then the bridge list is also, people call it floating string work, which is where you insert pins, and you're going to just use your tip zero and literally pipe a string that just hangs on top of those pins. And once that sets up, then you start piping your strings. And once you start moving your strings, you start taking the pins out. So these strings look literally like they're floating off the side of the cake. And of course, and the one that is, I call it the instant gratification string work, is oriental. <laughs> While it looks to be the hardest, it actually, I think, is the easiest. I agree. I agree. It's like drop strings. But you turn the cake upside down. That's the key. So obviously it's a competition <laughs> thing. We're not going to do it on real cake. Um, and then, you know, you can take them to so many different levels. I mean, I do where I'll do multiple layers or I'll pipe angled strings on top of straight strings. You can add lace points. I can actually physically pipe writing on top of string work. I've actually written messages on top of the strings. So there's things you can do with it that people don't realize it. Um, and then I so see the other two DVDs are actually more on pipe work, not so much just string work. They're about the filigree, which is what we're going to talk about more today. Um, taking actual icing and making 3D objects out of strictly icing. People sometimes don't realize how it's funny, it's like an oxymoron because it can be <laughs> wrong, but it's very delicate at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I've made some pretty large items just out of royal icing. Uh, and it's amazing what, what you can do with it. It is, you know, and so all six of these DVDs are, are, you know, there's there's a method behind what you've put into each of these DVDs. They're very structured, very thought out. I, I think that the way that you have, you know, put out these DVDs is really smart. Well, so yeah, yeah, I think they're great. <laughs> so yeah, you guys, uh, I would definitely suggest going and taking advantage of them. Um, we are going to have a, a special deal for you guys. Uh, uh, for, for those of you watching today, so for the next about 24 hours, we are going to have, um, I guess, free shipping for people in the United States, $5 off of shipping for anyone international. So um, all you need to do is go to, um, go to this uh, link, and we have a discount code for you. Oh, I forgot what that is. Um, if Bobby could uh, maybe put that up on the the chat box for everybody, <laughs> and and maybe message that to me. I forgot to I forgot to take care of that part of it. So anyway, we do have a discount uh, little code for you guys to to be able to get your free shipping um, or or reduced shipping if you're international. And the shipping actually only work um, counts for. I mean, you can actually buy up to three DVDs on one shipping charge. So um, I, I guess, Don, you can fit three different DVDs into the box. The standard size box, yes. Yeah. yeah. So three DVDs with one set of shipping. If you want to buy all six, um, then... We'll still um, keep the free shipping for them. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll work that out. <laughs> no. um, if you're having issues with, with the, the price, we can, we can work that out. But if you're going to buy all six of the, the DVDs, then uh, go ahead and maybe you, uh, you'll either need to place two orders or maybe I can have Bobby fix that. Oh, there you go. The code is Dawn. Just Dawn, D-A-W-N. 
<laughs> That's easy enough. I should have remembered that. <laughs> there you go. All right. So yeah, go ahead and, and uh, link over there. Check out the, the DVDs. Pick the ones you want, and um, they are they are well worth what what you will pay for those. I mean, you can you can go and take um, classes from people live that that you're going to pay five times this. And so, I mean, it's it's definitely worth it. So that's kind of why we did them. I had a lot of people who, you know, they people not everybody can afford classes, and you know, I'm one of those people. I'm a self-taught decorator from books, so. The main reason I did the DVDs was for people who couldn't afford to take all these classes, um, you know, have the ability to get it and learn the technique. And like I said, I, I've really tried to do it where we get really close-up shots, really good descriptions, and take kind of the fear out of trying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another thing that that is really um, that I that I want to wanted to point out is um, on KQ on our Facebook page, um, I asked a question a little while ago. Uh, I asked. So what technique do you think that you would like to learn or improve on? And I would say that 90% of the answers were piping and string work. So, yeah. I mean, here you go. <laughs> I mean, this is it. <laughs> so yeah, That makes me very happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think a lot of people are, are seeing that this is a really cool thing to know, and it's, and not only cool, but it's it's kind of the trend right now, and I think that it's coming back. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, also, to me, is. piping is a really strong base for decorators, and a lot of people have gotten into the cookie cutter type cakes with the fondant and the cutters and molds. Molds mm -hmm. have made it pretty easy, um, so it's nice to see people wanting to get that base back because it's really important to know that if you can't get that mold, you can pipe it on your own. Exactly. There are so many times where I've done like a last minute cake. And you know, I I think, oh shoot, I don't have a mold for that, or I don't have a you know a template for this, or a you know a whatever for this, a cutter for this, or and and I just think, okay, how can I create this otherwise? And and to be able to go back to your piping skills, to be able to go back to you know the real basics that that you know a lot of people uh, might have skipped over a little bit because of. The, the current trends of cake decorating and just jumping right into, you know, the, the the easy ways of doing things. So if you can get those, you know, real I, these are basic skills. I think that, I mean, okay. some of them are way more advanced, but I think they're important skills. You know, so, even the advanced ones, people call them advanced, and I don't think it's so much that they're advanced. It's just knowing the right technique and taking the time to practice it. Um, yeah. Like you know, when I have people take the string work classes, I think they're always shocked that it's not as hard as they thought it was. They just made it out to be so much more difficult, uh, but it's not. You know, it's it's a matter of practice. And I tell people when you take the class, don't expect to have a beautifully finished cake in one day. You'll have portions you'll be really happy with, but you have to go home and practice it. I mean, you're yeah. talking about I've been doing it for about I would say almost 10 years just string work. Uh, and it, it's still, there's days I have good days, and there's times that it looks pretty bad, and I take it all off again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> the royal icing just doesn't flow quite right. Or that. <laughs> it's pretty much yeah. sometimes. But, you know, it's, 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 at the end of the day, it's just a cake. It's just sugar. And the advantage is you wipe it off, and you do it again. Mm -hmm. So that's why I love it so much. You yeah. Know, push it a little. Yeah. I, you have a really good point there, though, that, it, you know, it looks amazingly difficult but a lot of times it's really not as hard as you think you just have to practice a little bit so we're actually gonna jump into our training now so um, we are going to show you guys Donna Donna's going to show you guys <laughs> I'm just putting up the pictures <laughs> so yeah Donna's gonna show you guys how to put together a filigree Christmas tree so this is perfect for the you know Christmas and if you guys make a filigree Christmas tree to go on it, on um, you know, for a cake topper or, you know, for a side of a cake or something like that, people are going to just their jaws are going to drop and they're going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did that. So anyway, here we go. We're jumping right into it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here we have all of your pieces already. That are so, piped. Um, yeah. Also, Amelia is going to put a link up to my website for everybody, and it's for the mm -hmm. templates. So you can just go on to that link, put in the password, 
and just t print out your own copy of these templates. All the templates that I've done in all these videos and all the stuff you see me doing out around, I actually hand draw them all. They're not something I've gone and printed. I physically make them. And they're really not difficult. So what I do is I get the sheet of paper, my templates, and then I put it underneath the little protection sheets. You know the little uh, page protectors you get for binders? They get, I think, like 25 mm -hmm. of them for $2. I find they're the best things to pipe on because they're really thin and they release the uh, piping really well. So the picture you have there is of, I piped 10 of the um, half trees. And I piped 10, you're going to use 8, but I always recommend make a couple of extra. Uh -huh. I decided, those ones are a tip 1, they're really little. I recommend you making them in a tip 2, not a tip 1, uh, until you get used to handling them. They are pretty delicate. Um, so what you're going to do is I said have your template under it and you just can you can start it however you want. I generally do the whole outline of the tree first and then I fill it in when I pipe. But you can do it in sections however works best for you. But you just want to make sure you get them all in. I like my pieces to dry overnight if possible. Because in that way you know they're set. You're not going to try handling them too quick and they won't be too fragile. So give them an overnight um, to, to set up. And I believe Amelia, I think you have the recipe that I use for string work. Do you still have that? Yes. Um, we actually do have the recipe. It is on um, the, the last training that you uh, did. Um, it is on there. So if you want to go and just in, in the, on the CakeFu website, just type in, do a Google search for Dawn Parrot. Um, I'm sure her thing will come up. In fact, I think I did post the recipes on an actual blog post. So okay. you could just type in um, the you know the recipe in the the Google search, and it should bring it up for you. Or I, I mean, at least your name, and it, it'll it'll come up for you. So you, you guys can find it there. Uh, and the only thing different about that recipe for those of you who who haven't um, seen it before is that it's just an egg white with powdered sugar, but I add gum arabic for some stretch and glucose for extra strength. And it does, I find it does make a good difference in these filigree pieces. It does make them quite a bit stronger, uh, and it just flows really well. Like, I just love this recipe. It's um, so like I said, so when you get your pattern, you're going to put your protector sheet on there and pipe as many as you want, but the tree ideally looks the best with eight pieces. Okay. And I do Real fast for can I can I interrupt you for a second for I, I just wanted to say down at the bottom of this screen right here, this is where you guys go to get the templates. So it's www.cakefood.com forward slash dawn and there is a password. It's password protected. So just so you guys are getting it today. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> so the password is filigree. So go ahead and, and there's actually um, more templates than the tree on there. There's actually a whole bunch of templates. There's oh, a cool. pumpkin and a flower and a gazebo. There's all kinds of templates on there, so they, they'll That's have access fun. to a bunch. Where do you find your templates, or do you just create them? I create them. I just hand-draw them. Awesome. I, it's, I usually look for some inspiration. I love Google Images. It's my favorite search engine, uh, and I type in filigree sometimes. Sometimes I just look for a basic sh outline shape, and then I just sit and kind of sketch and draw. Um, I just made this cute little birdhouse. It's kind of a take off the gazebo, but I put it up on a pedestal with little birds inside, and it's just, just really cute, sweet. Aww. Thanks for a lady cake or whatever. Um, yeah, I just look for things that kind of catch my attention and just run from there. You could use anything, really. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So there you go. Back to the, <laughs> back to the <laughs> pictures. I just wanted to make sure that you guys saw that, that link and password. So that you guys can access that. Perfect. Okay. All right. All right. I think we Let's talked see. about that one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now you're going to see the assembly. You're going to notice my really fancy tools here. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I am known. If there's one thing you'll find out about me, when I teach all my classes, I try to make the smallest list of supplies possible, or things that you have around your house. Um, I'm really big on not having to go out and buy $200 worth of supplies to take a class. Mm -hmm. So this was just a box that I bought something uh, that I came in and I thought, all you need is a nice 90 degree angle. So you can use a tissue box, I use glove boxes, whatever I have handy that has a nice 90 degree angle. And what you're going to do to release those piping, you use it off the edge of your table or your desk and you're going to pull down the plastic and have your hand directly underneath it so as you pull the piece of piping falls into your hand. 
really slow, really gentle. Then you pick up two of them, and I pipe down the center of one of them. Uh, so you're going to hold it in your hand. Actually, let me grab one. One second. Okay, cool. <laughs> I can put one in my hand to show you guys. All right. Um, someone was asking, uh, what did you say to add? Was it? She said gum arabic and one gum more thing. Gum arabic and glucose. And glucose. And it's okay. just a quarter teaspoon per egg white. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So I just released one, and while well, you'll see it, so I've got this piece in my hand. Okay. So what uh -huh. I do is I just kind of hold it in my hand like so, and then I'm just gonna I take my icing bag and I pipe just along the edge, just one of them. And then I lean it up against that box like you see in the picture and I slide them together on the corner so they meet up and then the icing touches. And then that way that's sealing those two. And I let that sit for just a minute. Perfect. That way you can uh, give it a chance. And you can uh, physically take the box out of there once it sets up for a few minutes because now you've got uh, two angles to sit. I generally leave the box there until I get my first four together. That way I've got a nice balance. Yeah, that, that's smart. <laughs> and takes away that chance. Not that I've tried it or anything, you know. <laughs> it's been a few crash and burns along the way. <laughs> you know, it's just sugar. You make it again, it's okay. Yep, it is. It is. Okay, so here we've got three sides now. Now this is looking down at it because it's the easiest way for you to see. While I had it in the, like, on still on the corner of the box, I released another piece, piped on the side like before, and I put it straight across from, you can decide which side, it doesn't matter. And I, when I put them together, I always get up and look down at them to make sure I'm getting that perfect 90 degree angle. Because when I add the fourth, we're going to make sure we have an X, basically, or a T. That's why the 90 degree is important. It just finishes it really well. So then, so I've added this third piece on. You can see I took the box away to show you that it can hold itself up just fine. And then I think the next one is going to be with four, correct? Mm-hmm. You can see this. Yeah. So here's our here's our actual piece now with four. So you can see it's a perfect X basically, and it doesn't have to be dead on perfect. Um, I like it to do it that way because now when I put the next four in, it's a lot easier to find the centers. But yeah, that's really smart. <laughs> for a show, for example, um, like if you're going to do it for a competition piece, it's pretty amazing when you actually someone actually took a picture of the first one I ever did, and it was funny because I hadn't even looked at it that way. He took a picture looking down on top of my cake, and that tree was perfectly dissected, and I hadn't even paid attention, but every judge commented on it. So cool. I was like, <laughs> oh, that's really important. <laughs> so that's why I, I use the 90 degree angle and make sure. So like, so now I've got these four. At this point, I like to let this X sit for a little bit and dry. Um, as you know, this royal icing is not going to take long to dry. You're only using like a tip one or two, so it doesn't take long to set up. Uh, maybe four or five minutes, just let it sit. You can release your next one. And then I think the next shot, I think I've showed it when I've added two more. So we've got mm -hmm. six pieces. There it is. So you can see it's starting to grow. But you see it still looks very even. All the pieces look evenly spaced out. Mm -hmm. And then finally we have a shot with the eight. Yeah. Look at how perfect oh, that is. Black. <laughs> so you can see. <laughs> you can see how even looking down at it, it, it looks correct. That's mm -hmm. why I like to do eight because I find it divides it properly. And also gives you really good balance to um, put it onto something. Because you physically, you can either assemble it on a piece, but normally I assemble it, then pick it up and move it. Because I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it seems to it seems to be easier to put things together sometimes on your own surface rather than on the cake surface. Exactly. You know, because sometimes you know it, it's harder to reach. Sometimes it's just you know not the most convenient place to put something together. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I agree. <laughs> but I have a tendency for the for a lot of these pieces. I go to Hobby Lobby. I don't know what craft stores everybody has in their areas. But they have these great little wooden discs that already have a routered edge. They're quite lovely. And I cover those in fondant. And then I pipe on them and decorate them up. And then what I usually do is when I make that first X, once the X is dry, I lift just the four pieces and I put a little bit of icing in the center and I attach it to my base. So then as I'm picking up my last four pieces, 
where they're going, it's not being moved anymore because then I now pick it up by the wooden base. I don't pick up the tree itself anymore. So that's a little tip that might help everyone. And then that way also when you put it on top of a cake, you're sitting the little base on there. And before you cut the cake, they, your customer or client, whoever you made it for, can take that base off and save it. That's and smart. Then cut the cake. I like that. That is really smart. All right, so here is the finished. Look how pretty that is. I seriously, people will look at you and be like, "You, you didn't make that. You couldn't have made that." <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be like, "Yep, I did." <laughs> yes, I did. I actually just taught this. I have a lady that I've been teaching privately off and on for about a year and a half, and I went back to visit her this week, and she actually made a cake for. She had a big party on Sunday. And I taught her this tree, and it was her topper for her Christmas cake. And she was so over the moon. And uh, a couple things I can tell people to do with it if you want. When you pipe them and they're flat on your sheet, you can actually add embellishments on there. But be careful. Don't put them towards the inside, which is that straight edge. You have to have them out more towards the, um, like the corners like that. Mm -hmm. But you can add, I should probably, it might be easier to show you. Okay, let me see. You can see. Okay, so you guys can see the tree. You put the little pieces kind of out here more. Like I bought those little uh, candies. They're little tiny hollies and berries. You guys have probably seen them. They come in the containers throughout the holidays. So you put a little drop of icing and we put green leaves and red berries on there. So it gives it that little pop of color. We've also done dragees. You can put gold dragees. You can actually, if you're really careful, you can paint it with luster dust. But you have to be careful because when you mix it with the alcohol, you got to be careful with your liquid. I've actually painted the garlands and the stars gold. So you can do things with it as well. I'm, a, I'm one of those less is more people, so I love it in white. And I think when you put on a colored cake, it shows more. But with a little punch of green and red was really pretty. So just to give you some ideas, you can definitely play with it and do more with it as well. But decorate your base up and kind of give it a fancy base, which is also really pretty. Yeah, I like your tip, of, though, of making sure that those decorations are towards the outside, the embellishments are toward the outside, because if you put them too close to the inside, you're not going to be able to get it put together properly. Exactly. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Again, not from experience or anything. <laughs> All right, so um, looking at this tree, we had a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, someone was asking about the piping tips. Um, what is the make of the piping tips that you use? Um, I generally use PME, but you can use Wilton. Again, mm -hmm. I would tell you if you're just starting out and this is your first time attempting it, use a Wilton 2 because that will give you a nice comfortable size to pick up. And then once you get better and more confident, you could do it down to a 1. I have a PME mm -hmm. 1.5, which is actually my favorite for filigree. It's got that right amount of fragile but not too heavy. I like it quite delicate. Uh, but a two is beautiful. Like, if you didn't see a one or a one and a half and a two, you can't tell the difference. So I would highly recommend just do a two. And if you have Wilton, there's nothing wrong with the Wilton tips or um, a Tico, any of them. They're all pretty much the same. All right. Yeah, I, I do like the PME brand. I think that they're a good quality, especially when you're getting down into the, the smaller, you know, the smaller the tip, the more important it is to have a, a nice, you know, clean... Uh, tip and I like yeah. the PMEs for you know the zeros and the double zeros you know the those are <laughs> you definitely want a, a good quality one for for that small. Oh, wait, have you ever seen the Beckonals? No. Oh, I have a couple of those. Uh, Geraldine Randalls has all of the ones that are left. The company without a business. Their zeros and double zeros are smaller than PME zeros and double zeros. Really? Oh yeah. They're like my pride and joy. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to look into those because I, I, when I'm when I'm doing, you know, especially like a competition type of piece, the smaller the better, of course. <laughs> exactly. Well, you should look up. She's she's in Ontario. I'm sure you know who she is. Just look up Geraldine mm -hmm. Randleson. She's yeah. out of Toronto now, um, but she has what's left. So and she'll order. You can order them online. I bought them when I was up there, so I love them. Cool. Very yes. cool. All right, and then again, you guys can actually get this template. Um, we're going to be doing a, a different one now, and um, but yeah, you guys can uh, see the the template right here. There you go. That's that's the template right there, and you guys can go and and 
get that today from from Don's website, which is really cool. <laughs> so there you go. Um, I love how each of your pieces are just a little bit different, and they're not. I mean, well, when I drew perfectly... those, it was for that cake I was telling you about that had the collar, um, mm -hmm. and the collar was all hand piped poinsettias. So if you look at the actual pattern in the tree. Every branch, one has a poinsettia, one has a Christmas ball. The next one has a poinsettia, and the next one has a Christmas ball. And believe it or not, when it's put together and you're looking at it, you can see all those. It That's really does cool. Make and I did the little bead border, you know, kind of going down each branch because I thought it would look like you know, you used to make the popcorn garland. Yeah, of that course. That's kind of what I was thinking of. Mhm. Mm and it looked, and it's kind of what it looks like when it's done. Uh huh. It's really cool. It 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 really is a, a really great design. So I think you you did good. I actually how big this one is. The one I made, I have it right here. Okay. I'll show you. This one's actually really little. The template you guys have is bigger. But you can see, kind of look at my hand. You can mm -hmm. see how small that is. Oh, that's little. It's just a little bitty one. This one I did with the zero, uh, no, a one because it was so little. But the one that the template is, is probably about another two inches taller, which is a, a nice size for a six inch cake. Oh, good. good. That's good. And so do you usually, if it's a, that was really loud, sorry. Um, <laughs> if, if it is a bigger project, do you usually use bigger piping or you, like a bigger tip or do you usually just... You can. Yeah, you can. And also you can take the templates and increase them in size a little bit. But of course, remember, you don't want to go too big with the templates because you have to pick up a panel. And if you pick up the panel and it's too big, it's going to break. So you have to keep that in mind. So definitely go with a bigger size tip to make it stronger for sure. Awesome. Okay. We have now a Christmas ornament. Yay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm also known for trying to push the envelope as much as I can. Now these are just tiny. They're only about, oh, I'll grab them in a second so I can show you guys. Uh, they're maybe, I don't know, two inches long. They're just tiny. Uh, but I've done them six inches big. And I, at one time I was thinking how much fun it would be to try to pipe it on a wire and hang it up. Just because I'm crazy enough to think that. And uh, <laughs> I did it in a live demo in Austin without having time to put one together to practice. Went on <laughs> but they worked. Um, but I thought these were cute to show. Just to show you again another thing you can do with Royal Icing. And it's all icing. There is one, I used the 30 gauge wire, really tiny. But the reason I made these is I actually want to do a cake where they're going to kind of hang off the edges so they mm -hmm. can physically move. Uh, that's what it's for. So this one is the longer of the two. Uh, it kind of, kind of reminds me of the really old Christmas balls. It'd be pretty done in color too, I think. Um, oh, I agree. Again, I like the white. <laughs> I agree. So, uh, I, I'm, I'm all about the white too. <laughs> Someone's okay. actually asking, can you dust them with a dry luster dust? Um, you can. It doesn't stick really great. Uh, it, it'll give it a hint of the luster. If you really want to be a certain color, you, you want to mix it with an Everclear or a lemon extract, but try not to have too much of the liquid. Try to make it more a bit heavier, more like paint, and just hit it briefly. Don't don't keep painting it. Just hit it the one time, and then what you get is what you get. If you have an airbrush, say if you want to do the whole tree green, it works really well to airbrush them because it's such a fine mist. That does work really well. I've airbrushed the pumpkin, and it works so, great. Lots of dust hits. It just doesn't want to stick as well, so it does need a little bit of help with some sort of liquid. Okay. That's that's a good good tip. Um, okay, so these ornaments we have another one here too, and these are all ones you can find on your on your. Actually, no, they're not there yet, but I will have them up there. Oh, okay. Probably just check back because I just drew these, um, so I will try to get them up online. They'll probably be on that same page, probably in the next day, with it probably okay. today or tomorrow. Cool. We'll leave that link up. You guys can go ahead and go over there and. And, and get those. I think these are awesome. And you know what? I was I've actually 
every Christmas, every time Christmas rolls around, I think, you know what? I'm going to make an all edible Christmas tree ornament tree. <laughs> I think that would just be so fun, don't you? I mean, yes. to have gingerbread things and have piped things and maybe even some blown and pulled sugar things. Mm. I just think, wouldn't wouldn't it be fun to make a tree with all edible, you know, the ornaments? So right. this will this will be going on my list of finally <laughs> one day when I actually decide that I'm really gonna do it. <laughs> You're gonna start in January for next year. That's, a, that's I know. The really, it, it would be. It really would be having to start right now and work for next year. So we'll see Definitely. if that happens. <laughs> yeah, pictures up for us. Yeah, that, I think that would be really fun. I mean, my my Christmas tree this year, I think, was, I don't know, a half fail. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby didn't really care for it all that much. <laughs> don't feel bad. We only just got our tree last night. It still only has lights on it, so don't feel oh, bad. Oh, <laughs> we're, we're really behind this year. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> all right. So these are the templates right here. And um, these are the ones that you'll have up. So I saw um, you had um, a whole one, and then you had halves. So do well, you just only, use? I actually made them in halves because I wanted to hang them off the side of the cake. I wanted the one side to be flat. Does that make sense? Because I didn't want it to be. If it was a bulbous shape, it could hit the cake maybe if it moved. So I made them in halves. Let me grab them. I got them right by my knees. All right. Yeah, oh, you're fine. You can see how little they are now. Um, and they're also great to do them on the halves because then when you do hang them somewhere, whether it's a tree you make or whatever, you don't have to worry about hanging them. I'm trying to get them where you can see. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. That's so perfect. So the actual back is flat. There's, it's just What I've done is one full piece instead of the trees where I do halves. I did one full and then three half. Now I could make three half for the back and make it a full all the way around. You most definitely could, but I'm picturing this hanging against something and I didn't want it to be hitting and breaking the pieces. So that's the long one. And then this is the, the more bulbous one. Right. And both of those have a flat side to them, is that right? Yeah, yeah this one has a completely flat side here. But again, like I said, you could pipe. I do have three more pipe, and I could very easily put them on there and make it just like the tree where it's a full round. But like I said, I'm, I'm picturing these being hung somewhere. So you always have to bear in mind what are you doing with it. If you're just going to make these, the ones I did on demo were probably about that big. They're about four inches maybe. And I bought these little snowflake hooks, like shepherd's hooks kind of ideas, and I just had them hanging. So that way I did a full all the way around. But if I'm putting this on a cake and it's hanging just kind of off somewhere, I think you want to be careful not to have it sticking out too far. So yeah. the half ones would be great because your your cake is sitting here. You don't worry about any any damage on the way. Very cool. But I just thought they'd be fun to show. Again, another option you can do with royal icing. Like most people don't think you can take icing and hang it on a wire, but you can. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, and here's a, a closer up picture of it for those of you that want to see how, you know, how that it has that flat side to it and then the three on one side. So, and that's again, just really fun. And if you want to make it round, you would just need to hang it up. It takes a bit more patience to make these round because unlike the tree, we can't stand it up unless you designed it. I made a bell. Uh, the bell you could stand up and do like the tree, do a 90 degree angle, and so on and so on. But with things like this, obviously you can't stand them up, so you have to get one side done, you'll have to hang it on something, attach your one piece into the side, but you're going to have to hold it until it's it's well stuck. So you mm -hmm. may have to hold it for two or three minutes, and then once that's dry well enough, then you can go ahead and put another one in, same thing, hold it. It's just going to be time consuming to make them round. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I, I think that's really genius to put the wire in it too. I think that, you know, that, so you lay the wire down and then you just pipe over it or do you pipe it and then put the wire down? No, I, I pipe the wire, I pipe right on the wire. Like I sit my wire right on the template, 
So I did my curl, my hook, and everything on there first. So it was already in the shape, but making sure the wire was really straight in the center. And then, um, like I said, when I pipe the pattern, I pipe around and straight up the middle. So I'm hitting the wire and then piping, attaching to that. So that way everything grabs. Perfect. And it's just the wire. The wire only goes in the full, the one full piece, not in any of the halves. Just you put it in your one main piece and then you just pipe like the tree otherwise. Okay. I have a question for you. This is my own personal question <laughs> uh, because I can do that. <laughs> uh, right? I have that right. <laughs> Okay, so there was one time I was piping some snowflakes, and they, they were really cute and, and nice, but after I was done piping them, I, as I was pulling them off of the paper, the, the piping actually started separating from itself, and, and the little end pieces were pulling off and, and falling off. Is that a fault of the, the actual royal icing, or was there something that I was doing wrong? No, I think 9 times out of 10 is probably your royal icing, and it also depends on what you're piping them on. Uh, I find the wax paper and the parchment paper doesn't release them really well, and then also wax and parchment gives you that crinkled backing on any of your piping, where if you use this plastic, especially these cheap little sheets, they come off smooth and beautiful because they're automatically um, slippery almost, if you will. If you can polish them up and they have that nice little, well, everything will just slide off them. And it could also be maybe they weren't 100% dry. If they're not really, really dry, they'll stick to that versus coming off. That so, could have been my issue. I was rushing a little bit. <laughs> that, that was the thing I was going to ask you how long you waited because that happens a lot if I try to remove things even on the plastic and it's not 100% there. It's going to stick to the plastic until it's dry. So that's why I would say if you're going to pipe it, give it overnight. Because these tips are so small, it overnights plenty of time. I've actually had to rush a few things where I piped them in the morning and took it off early afternoon, but that's pushing it. For most people, it wouldn't be quite dry enough to handle. Okay. Uh, we actually have another question. Someone asks, uh, what's the difference between gum Arabic and gum Tex? Um, you know what? I'm terrible to answer that question. I can't tell you what the real differences are. Um, they're both of a, of a gum nature. I've just never used the gum Tex in uh, my royal icing. I think that's more for, if I'm not mistaken, it's more for like a gum paste kind of thing. It's just a, I think it's a stronger gum, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I know I've been asked that before, and you think I would have researched that by now, wouldn't you? I'm not really good at that. I just use the one I've been told that works, and uh, but I just know I think gum Tex to me, when I think of gum Tex, that's more like a, a Tylos kind of that sort of which is a heavier gum. If I'm, I'm, I could be wrong, and if somebody knows, I would love to know. I should be. <laughs> well, All right. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> and one may could, very well could be just that one has maybe um, a different grain. Like the gum Arabic is really fine, like really like powder, so it doesn't cause any issues with clogging. Um, so I haven't, I haven't tried gum text to see. I mean, I, I, I think... I've heard people tell me they've put gelatin in their royal icing for stretch, gelatin powder, which I found very interesting because that's quite grainy, uh, which might be okay for a heavier piping. I'm not sure that I'd try it for strain work, but it did work for them. So that's kind of interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah. I would have never thought to try it. <laughs> Huh. They said they read it somewhere and tried it, and it worked out fine. I think they had a little bit of issue with some clogging here and there. Uh, but, like I said, the, the gum, gum Arabic versus gum Tex, I think they're similar properties. But, I mean, you don't put gum Arabic into, let's say, a, a Tylos or a, to, to, to make a, a gum paste into your fondant or whatever. So I'm assuming one is stronger than the other if I had to make an educated guess. Okay, great. All right, now we have some questions about, sorry, <laughs> about coloring the the pieces. Mm -hmm. So one one of the questions is, can you just color the the royal icing before you pipe it? And if so, what do you use? Do you use a powder? Do you use a you know a gel or any specific brand or anything like that? That you use? You can use any of the above. Uh, I've made black royal icing for string work, and I just use the mirror gel colors. The key was I added it um, before I finished adding all the sugar because you know you're going to add that gel, it's going to thin it down. So you just want to be careful not to make your icing too thin because if it's too thin, it's going to run and not going to hold its shape for you. But you can use the powders or the gels, whichever you're comfortable using. Just keep an eye on your consistency. 
Uh, it said if it starts to get a little bit thin, then you just add a bit more powdered sugar back in, and it'll fix it right up. And you can, like I said, I pipe black, I pipe red, I pipe dark greens. Everything works fine. Good, good. So you you stick with the gels then? Uh, I've used both. Uh, it's just that I found I find for trying to get things like red and black, the powders just don't seem to quite get there for me. So mm -hmm. I just stick with the mirror gel because the mirror gel is really good for if you want red, you get red. If you want burgundy, you're going to get burgundy. That's the one thing I do like about their colors. So uh, I stick with those because they work. Okay. Um, and then you were talking about not using parchment and waxed paper and, and the plastic is what you use. Can you explain again what the plastic is that you use? What, what sure. type of plastic? It's just the protector sheets uh, that you buy. I'll hold one up. Let me just take the icing off here. I've moved these little things. I buy the protector sheets that you buy at the store that most kids have them for school. They're just these little the plastic sheets that you put the papers in for binders to help protect your any kind of writing. And you can reuse these over and over and over again. Just wipe it off once you're done. Kind of polish it a little bit. But I like them because they're super, super light and flexible. I actually bought like an acetate paper once. And the acetate paper, as you're pulling it down, it tends to bounce back and snaps your icing. So that I caution you against buying acetate because it is a harder plastic. And it does want to kind of snap. And all your work is going to be ruined. And these are so cheap. Like I said, you get 25 of them, I think, usually for around $2, $3. And you can even, I've actually taken them and cut them down the middle. Instead of one sheet, I've got two sheets. So, I mean, you can use them all you want. But they're great. Like I said, the problem with the parchment and the wax paper is just that it can take in water, which is liquid from your icing. And that's why you get those little ripples underneath. Uh -huh. If anyone knows their colors, well, it doesn't happen on plastic. So, and it comes off beautifully and clean. That's good. That's very good. Yeah, the, I, I find that parchment is better than wax paper. Wax paper is horrible for piping on. It really is yeah. horrible. Don't ever use it. <laughs> Especially, you know, doing the doing the, you know, um, the flow in icing. That yes. is uh, definitely, you, you don't want to use that. Parchment is better, but plastic is definitely better. Well, plastic is better, but then again, that being so. said, you have to be careful. If you try to do collars or big run-in pieces with uh, royal icing on plastic, Sometimes they don't like to set up because they can't breathe. Mm. There's no air that can get under the plastic. So it depends on what you're making. Um, you can also put it either like a nice lamp that's got a nice hot bulb. Or sometimes mm. I've actually put it in the oven overnight with the light bulb on, so that way it's got a little bit of heat that helps keep it shiny. Uh, but plastic, I've heard mixed reviews about. Uh, I've done most pieces I've done as run has been okay, but I haven't attempted to do a collar on plastic yet. I do those on parchment just okay. because... The bigger ones, they need the, the room to get dried and me. Okay, that's that's good information. <laughs> okay, and then uh, let's see. Someone is asking um, the wire that you used. It's white and covered. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it's just the same wire that you use for floral wire. It's the paper covered wires. I just can't really always buy white, and so that way if I need green, I tape it, um, you know, or if I want to dust it. I just buy the white, and I use the 30 gauge, the really thin stuff on that, because you don't want it to be any, too much flexibility. If you have to curl the wires, they, it's not going to affect your piping. But the paper wire is good because it gets wet when you pipe it. Same thing if anyone makes gum paste flowers. You know that when you wet the paper, it's what sticks to the paste. Well, the wetness comes from the icing sticks to the paper, which sticks to the wire, and... I, I think that's going to hold much better. I haven't tried it yet with the plain wire, but I can see the plain wire coming out. So yeah, I do I, think I, I think I can Yeah. Okay. And well, then. Some people are watching closely. Yeah, I know. They've got good questions. Yeah. <laughs> got some smarties going on here. <laughs> Um, okay, so someone had a more personal question. <laughs> uh, they said, uh, Love your accent. <laughs> are you French Canadian? No. No, I'm actually from Newfoundland. I'm from an island that's not even attached to the country out on the East Coast. Um, most people from Newfoundland are either background of Scottish or Irish. Way back when. Oh, cool. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> it's funny because I don't think I have an accent. <laughs> well, you know, nobody really does, do they? <laughs> no, that's right. No. My husband has a strong Canadian accent, but... 
Awesome. Okay, and then someone's asking about uh, the gum. I hate to say this word. Tragant. Tragant. Tra tragacanth. Oh, tragacanth. Yeah. <laughs> um, again, uh, I've not played with that one. The only time I've ever used gum tragacanth is to make uh, a glue, like an edible glue. Um, uh, to be honest, I've never broken down all these different ones. It's terrible. I should, as a pastry chef, I really should. It's just that when a recipe calls for whichever one, I use the one it calls for. Um, but I would think it would probably be pretty similar. I couldn't see it not giving me uh, or giving a hard time because it's nice and fine like Arabic. Uh, so you could definitely give it a try. But if you can get the Arabic, I would just stick with the recipe that is tried and true. And by the way, that recipe is uh, Geraldine Randelson's recipe, and she is just amazing. And you know, when I read that recipe, if I thought if it works for her, there's no reason I'm going to second guess it. And I have not ever used another royal icing recipe since I've been using this one. All right, cool. Um, let's see. There, um, someone did ask, would you recommend pastry school for a cake decorator? Oh, I hate that question. I know I don't mind you too. <laughs> I did like that question a year ago when I was a chef, a pastry chef instructor. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> it was hard, you know, you have to be careful on your answer on that one. Um, what I here's what I would recommend. I would tell you to look at what you want to learn, and depending on your area, if you're in an area where, say, you're close to New York or Chicago, they have some of the bigger pastry schools. Like, and the one in Chicago has Nick Lodge come in and do the cake classes. And if any of you have Chef Nick Lodge on your Facebook, you'll see that he posted the cakes that his students did this week. I mean, how amazing to get Chef Nick Lodge to come teach your classes. And I know that one of the other schools, it used to be called the French Pastry School, but I think it's now called the International Pastry School, I want to say. It's run by um, Jacques Therese, the dean, I believe. They bring in people like Nick Lodge and all these other people who are specialists in cake to teach them cake. But you get a very small percentage of cake. Pastry school is that. It's pastry school. Um, so would I recommend it for someone who wants to be a cake decorator? I would probably say no. You'd, if you want to be a cake decorator with other skills, like you want to be good in chocolate, you want to be able to add sugar or ice and all to your thing, then maybe. It really depends on what your goal is. I would tell you to really research the schools in your area as to what they're offering. But to be 100% honest, like the school that I worked in, they only did cakes for two weeks of the entire ter three terms you went. You had two weeks of cakes. That was it. And so they were very disappointed with the fact that they didn't learn more. Make sure you go and check out these DVDs. Um, they are, I believe they're listed at $19.99. And which is an amazing deal, and you know, make it your Christmas. <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> definitely something worth worth getting. Um, and um, make sure that you uh, go and, and check them all out. These are I, honestly, this is what everybody is wanting to know right now. So it's definitely worth looking into. <laughs> and uh, let's see, we have one, two. Okay, number seven, which is the winner of all of them, <laughs> is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Rutledge Craig. So, oh, yeah, Elizabeth. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Uh, we will, um, oh, I, I forgot to get, um, you know, I, I can, I'll get your uh, mailing address and all of that, and we'll get that to you. And then the winner of... The winner of the the one DVD, uh, well, the email ad address says Travis Dodd. So congratulations! Congratulations! Uh, you, won, you won the second of the, the DVDs. You should have just seen the coupon for one and two. Oh yes. Okay, so anyone who didn't happen to win, <laughs> make sure that you go check these out, and also don't forget to put in that coupon code. Um, when you're checking out, that is going to get you the free shipping or reduced shipping for anyone who's international. Uh, the, the code is DAWN, just D-A-W-N, and that will get you your free shipping on, on your order. So, um, yeah, congratulations to, to you guys who won, and thank you, Dawn, for coming on.
You, um, Thank you for having me. It was wonderful. You just have really great information, and uh, we really appreciate having you with us. So, uh, and thank you again, everybody, for, for coming on and, and joining us and listening in. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.